Well, Shona, we talked about previously about resume, how to stay positive, importance of networking, because a lot of jobs is through networking. But I have a question for you in terms of what can newcomers and other underrepresented professionals do to increase their odds of being fairly considered in the process? Mm, it, I think, well, the biggest challenge that particularly newcomers will, will face um, I've, I've worked with hundreds of, of students and seen them gone through the journey is like showing up to a new place and not having the network. Right. Yeah. Um, so that immediately can be really, really tough to break through. I know like myself, I'm in a smaller community, right? So my students will talk sometimes about like, it's really hard to break through these clicks of people who have known each mm -hmm. other and the parents have known yeah. each other yeah. and it can, it can be hugely, hugely challenging. Um, so I, I think for, uh, for, for newcomers in particular, one of the, one of the ways that we can start to, to build our network is simply, um, simply by joining the community and engaging in things mm -hmm. in the community whether or not they are actually related to our um to our profession right um so i, I ha had a story of of um a, a student who is a, a newcomer he had moved here from nigeria and was struggling to build his network and then he he joined a basketball team. My partner was on the basketball team. My partner, oh, you're connected. Oh, you're in Shauna's class at school. Let me introduce you to these people who also happen to be connected to the community, some of whom are hiring managers and so on. Yes. And immediately that kind of just like opens up a whole different group. Of yeah. And the activity had like nothing to do with with his profession, yeah. right? Like he's a project manager, but he's meeting these these relevant connections um, at at like a basketball uh, basketball practice, right? So I think really being open to um, to the fact that you know it's those professional circles are, are important and we can join yeah. things like our professional associations. And I would absolutely counsel you to do that as well. But I think also doing things that make you uniquely you and the stuff that you just plain enjoy can connect you with people that, uh, that can help you in your job search as well. And I think that's a particularly true in, um, in a smaller, smaller community, yeah. um, like the, the one that I live in. Um, the other thing that I, I think we can do as newcomers and underrepresented job seekers to make sure that we're getting that fair consideration, um, first and foremost, is building that network so we know about these opportunities, right? Because yeah. so often jobs aren't posted. If we're not connected, we miss that whole piece of we things. Don't. Yeah. And the other thing we can do is really spend um, some time focused on um, on our materials, like our marketing materials, like our resume and our cover letter and our LinkedIn, and making sure that we're not opening ourselves up or sharing information that could potentially have us screened out of, of the process by sharing information that's not relevant to the hiring process. Um, so first and foremost, we want to make sure that you are aware of the norms and standards in the job market in which you are applying. So in Canada, we want to be up to speed on the specific um, specific expectations of employers here. So where in some countries, it's really, really common to put a headshot on a resume here Take in Canada. That's marital status. Yeah. Right. Like marital status and, and all of the, all of these really personal yeah. details that is quite literally going to make a Canadian recruiter uncomfortable, right? Because the, the intention here is we're hiring based on skill and qualification, yes. arguably sometimes. Right. But that's the ideal intention. Yes. Um, and that would make them uncomfortable. So knowing those norms and standards is going to be really, really key. And then I would even take it a step further and be going through my resume and asking myself um, what other pieces of information could be getting me screened out unnecessarily. Like one thing I always find interesting is a job seekers will be including like their street address on, on, their, um, on their resume. And it's like, why? Why would we include our street address? Nobody's coming to your house. Nobody's sending you a letter anymore. That has really, really shifted. And if you think about it, that street address can be really, really revealing about your socioeconomic status. Mm -hmm. It could, there in many communities, it's very, very common for clusters of different cultures to live in different areas. It could re reveal information about that. Who knows, right? So yeah. I would say, like, what are pieces of information like that that aren't relevant? Just take it off your resume. Yeah. And, you know, I like to have faith that maybe recruiters are um, are not going to not going to consider that information. But the reality is that bias is so complex and it, it, we call it unconscious because we don't know we're consciously doing it. 
So if we can take steps to, um, to mitigate some of that, to further our success as a job seeker, I would totally do it. I would, I would totally do it and delete information that could reveal potential personal information about ourselves. Those are great tips, Shona. Thank you very much. And for the audience, if you have more tips, leave them below and tune in next time for my final question with Shona.